faith that moves mountains. As you know, at one point in the Gospels, Jesus speaks of a faith where you could say to a mountain, be cast into a sea, and it would be so. So often I believe that we need to hear these words again and again, because I think as believers sometimes, we just think that we're okay. I believe in Jesus Christ, I get up, I say my prayers, I'm good to go. But Jesus mentions a much deeper faith. Now, I know in my own life how I've always had to keep looking at myself and keep looking at myself and examining myself to make sure that I'm not just going through the faith motions. So many of us, I think, sometimes, we just go through the motions. It just becomes a kind of a habit. It's a thing we just do. And yet, we're called to be more than that. We're called to be better than that as believers. The letter to the Hebrews, if you remember last week especially, the letter to the Hebrews used that word faith over and over again. The faith of Abraham, the faith of of the believers, the faith that we need, the faith that convicts, the faith that is just alive. It's a living faith. It's not this, this dormant, nothing faith. A faith so powerful that if God says do, we do. God even said to Abraham, sacrifice your own son, and he was ready to do it. That kind of faith, that ardent, strong, powerful faith. And I have to say this more and more to myself and to you, we need that kind of faith today. Now, I don't want any of you going out sacrificing your children, not that kind of faith. I don't want you taking kids up on a mountain and, you know, the, the, the knife and all, we're not doing that. But that depth of faith, that conviction of love for Jesus Christ, that desire to be closer to him than anything, which will well up within us and spill out into a culture, into a society that needs a real infusion of faith because we become so distant from God. And since you're here, I say we start with you. That kind of faith. The letter to the Hebrews is going to continue throughout the month of August and beyond. We're going to continue to follow it. And tonight's reading is one of those more powerful readings. We're surrounded, it starts out. We're surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses. Think about that imagery alone of having faith-filled people around you. Let's face it, the more you're around believers, the stronger your own faith becomes. And so the author to the Hebrews is kind of talking about that. We're surrounded. But then he goes on, and I think it's so beautiful how he continues. Then he goes on to say, but let's rid ourselves of every encumbrance, of every sin that clings to us and persevere in the race, keeping our focus on Jesus Christ. Hear it again. Let us rid ourselves of every encumbrance, those things that weigh us down in this life, of every sin that clings to us. Think in your own life of the things that sometimes weigh you down. The situations, the problems, the the, the various things that are going on in your life. And the author is saying, no, 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 no. We need to be people of faith. So we need to shed what slows us down, basically, of growing closer to Christ. But then it's that, that, that whole thing of persevering in the race. Persevering. Keeping that focus on Jesus Christ. And, and who is Jesus Christ, the author tells us? He is the leader and perfecter of our faith. Our lives really, truly need to be that. Focused on Jesus in all things. You want to be able to move mountains? I mean, Jesus tells us, you want to move mountains? There's going to be a passage in Luke's gospel that's going to be skipped over. I kind of wish it weren't skipped over. It's in chapter 13, just a little after this one. If you had the faith the size of a mustard seed, you could say to the tree, be thrown into the sea. If you had faith, You could say to the mountain, be cast into the sea. We need to really ask ourselves, is that my faith? Do I really truly believe? Because if we do, you know, it's cute how people think, if we're all believers, we'll all just get along, right? Everything will just be hunky-dory. 
Today's gospel is one of those gospels that shakes me up a little bit. Jesus says, I didn't come for peace, I came for division. Say what, Jesus? Did, did, did you hear him say this? I mean, didn't, don't you sit there and go, hold on a second, that doesn't make any sense to me, Lord. What are you talking about? I came that there might be division. It starts with that blazing fire. When I'm ablaze with Jesus Christ, there'll be people who won't like it. He's letting us know. He, he's, remember now, we're in, we're in that section of Luke's gospel that, you know, like all of the gospels, that middle part, we all know the beginning, the birth, and all of that stuff. We all know the crucifixion. We know that all very well. And then we forget that Jesus is doing this whole formation of his disciples. He's preparing them. He's getting them ready. His primary focus is them. And he needs them to have faith. He needs their faith to be the size of a mustard seed because what's coming is going to be persecution. Have you ever felt a little persecuted for believing in Jesus Christ? In our workplaces, in our families. Jesus even says, even in a household of five, there will be division over his name. But if that fire is blazing, if the faith is alive, it won't be that kind of division that we see amongst human beings today. It's not that kind of division. It's not that, you know, we're going to get into fisticuffs over Jesus Christ or something like that. That's not what he's talking about. If I truly love Jesus Christ, it's going to show and it's going to be, everything that I do is going to be centered on him. And let's face it, for some, that is difficult. But have you ever had a good, true, spirited discussion with someone over faith? And I mean, you know, the, the good one. I, I love then Father Barron, now Bishop Barron, in the Catholicism series, spoke at one point about how we've lost the ability to have a good argument. And he doesn't mean fighting. He means the exchange of ideas between us, of being able for me to say to you, this is what I believe about Jesus Christ. For you to come back and say, well, I hear you there, but this seems to be missing. For me to then go back to you. And just because we're disagreeing doesn't mean we don't like each other. But there will be these divisions sometimes. And it's in that spirit that my faith gets ever stronger. Doesn't yours? When you're challenged, when you're challenged a little bit in the faith, when someone has pushed you just a little bit further, you're, you're on fire, you're ready, and maybe I'm missing something, and, and wow, you just helped me capture it. That can come out of that division. That can come out of that, if you will, um, pushback. And so, yes, I wish that fire were burning, because if you've got the fire in your belly, you're willing to go further, you're willing to see more, you want to know, you're going to... Tell others, I love this Jesus Christ. I wish that fire were burning. But let's face it, Jesus is also setting up his disciples and letting them know there will be those even further from that extreme, not within your family. And when you're burning and you're this fire, they're going to persecute you. They're going to persecute you. It's that formation he's got to do with his disciples and kind of like what I have to say to you as believers. Be on fire for the faith, but know that it will come with a bit of a persecution. There will be resistance. People say, why is that? And they say, I really don't know. But there are just people that when we talk faith, they just get angry. I don't know why. And I try to diffuse it as best I can sometimes, but they just can't accept it. But if I have a faith that moves mountains, it can even move that person. And so we need to believe and we need to have an ardent, strong faith. We need, to, today more than ever, we need that faith that moves mountains. We need to be alive and on fire for Jesus Christ. With all the division, with all the questions, with all the problems that are going on in the world, don't you think so? Don't you think we really, you know, we could be the seed, if you will, in the culture that is above the culture, better than the culture, stronger than the culture, to say to the culture, this is what it's really all about? Persevere in the race. Rid yourself of every burden and sin that clings. 
I need to hear those words. I hope you need to hear those words. And I'm sure you know people who need to hear those words. Persevere. Be strong. Keep going. That's a faith that can move mountains. So let's move some mountains, OK? Can you work with me on this? We need some mountains to be moved. Can we all work together on moving these mountains through our faith, through our own belief, through our spending more time in prayer, spending more time together of discussing the things that are most important, things far beyond some of the silliness that we see on news programs and the dumb things that are being said by all sorts of famous people. I'm talking about the real things that matter, the real things about faith and love and care and salvation and, and working toward Jesus Christ and persevering in the faith those important conversations that are good to have. That's the kind of faith we need to be cultivating. And I guarantee you, Jesus wasn't kidding. With that kind of faith, we can move mountains. It takes time. We've seen recent court decisions that people said would never have happened. I believe it's because we were here every Monday night praying for it that it happens. I believe that that kind of faith moved a mountain. And more mountains need to be moved. My dear brothers and sisters, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's have that faith that moves mountains. Let's have that faith the size of a mustard seed that will allow us to go forth and become that big bush, that faith that allows us to move others to persevere towards Jesus Christ by we ourselves first having that perseverance and striving towards Jesus Christ. My dear brothers and sisters, I would love to see this parish become filled with people who have that faith that can say to the mulberry tree, be cast into the sea, and it'll happen. Or to say to this mountain, be cast into the sea, and it will happen. In that very figurative sense for us being able to say, Lord, I so believe in you. I pray that you help me grow and that you help this person I love so much grow in Jesus Christ. God bless you.